Yes, well, I think we've been advised that the audio will work for recording, but may, may not be the best. So I will try to do what the nuns taught me, which is to enunciate. Okay. Um, good afternoon and welcome to the May 9th, 2022 Metropolitan Traffic and Parking Commission meeting. If you are not satisfied with the decision made by the Traffic and Parking Commission, you may appeal the decision by filing for a writ of certiorari with the Davidson County Chancery or Circuit Court. Your appeal must be filed within 60 days of the date of the entry of the commission's decision. We advise that you seek your own independent legal advice to ensure that your appeal is filed in a timely manner and that all procedural requirements have been met. I ask for an approval of today's agenda. It's, we have a first. Second. Is there a second? Second. We have a first and a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Approval of the minutes of the April 11th, 2022 meeting. Move to approve. We have a motion to approve. Is there a second, please? Second. We have a first and a second. All in favor? Aye. They've been approved. Approval of the consent agenda. Please note that items on the consent agenda will be voted on at a single time. No individual public hearing will be held, nor will the commission debate these items unless a member of the audience or the commission requests that the item be removed from the consent agenda. There is one item on the consent agenda today. All right, I will read it. It is to authorize a change in hours for the existing loading zone at 1414 Clinton Street from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. requested by Nelson's Green Briar Distillery. Is there a, any Make discussion? A to approve. We have a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. The item has been approved. The next item on our agenda is the smart parking contract update. And Ms. Oh. Thank you. Yes, that is fine. Welcome. Oh, thank you. Do I need to start all over or did y'all hear me fine? Uh, you don't want to start all over. Right. Okay, I will. Sorry. <laughs> Excuse me, I didn't realize I had to hit a button. Good afternoon, Diana Alarcon. I'm the director over in the Department of Transportation and Multimodal Infrastructure. Um, as you are aware, I've been coming um, every month for the last few months just giving you updates. And today I want to give you a little bit more information of where we are with the upcoming parking contract with LAS Parking. So I've had a chance to meet with a few of y'all, but I have a few more meetings to have one-on-one -on -one to go into more detail of exactly what the contract covers. I also want to share with you that the contract is still in draft form. We have still have a few things that we need to iron out, but I would say the meat and potatoes of the contract as a whole is pretty much done, but we do want to make sure we have a very thorough contract. Um, so I'm going to highlight those things for y'all today. Um, but in one of my meetings, I was asked, hey, we've been asking for a map of where our meters are at and, and all of that. So that's what you have in front of you right here. This is actually a map that we have. We have one of downtown of all of the locations of where we actually have a meter. As we begin the new parking program, 
program with replacement of the multi-space meters, we will be focusing on what meters we currently have on the street today. So what you see in this map, that's going to be our focus. And typically, we'll remove all the single space meters, and we'll be installing one multi-space meters for as many um, single space meters are on that block, as well as we're going to be um, also um, putting up QR codes. So as many of y'all may be familiar, when you go into a private garage today, you actually go in and you put on your picture phone camera, you take it and the QR pops up and asks for your information. You enter your information, include your credit card and your license plate number, and as well as your time that you want, and it'll automatically charge you. So we will have a very similar system as well um, throughout our street network. So it's a really exciting opportunity. It's moving us into a contactless business in the parking program. Next slide, please. So I just want to go over some terms of the contract with y'all. This is a five-year contract. It is going to be a management fee. So um, I think there was confusion. The prior contract, when this came before this board, um, it was actually a lease agreement. That is not what we're proposing at this time. We're actually proposing a more of a fee uh, management fee structure where they will be actually um, paid based on that service that they're providing us. So it's a little bit different. Um, and it's also going to have some performance measures tied to it that they will have to meet. There will be an opportunity also for them to uh, uh, generate an additional management fee, and this again is going to be some much stronger um, key performance indicators that they actually have to um, meet as well. A very important um, part of this is all our revenue that we're collecting from the parking program will be deposited into Metro Nashville account. We will not, they will not be keeping any of our funds. It'll all be going directly into Metro Nashville's accounts. We will be providing them with three months of operating expenses up front so that they could actually be able to operate the business. They'll have to, by the 10th of the month of the following month, provide us with the P&L of the services and the work and everything that was done. That's what we would sign off and then reimburse, but they'll have a three-month working um, operating fund to work off of. Um, we can cancel this with notice. So I just want to make that very clear. We will be purchasing uh, multi-space meters. Uh, the meters will be designed to take credit cards and bills. We are getting away from coins. Um, and uh, many reasons. One is um, it's a very labor intensive and the banks charge us a lot of money to count coins. So that's why we're moving away from it. It is my hopes that the majority of our business as we move through the parking program will be in credit cards versus even bills. Um, because that is again the most contactless type of business that we can operate. Uh, you will also have an additional payment option through a QR code, which I spoke about, and we will be using electronic citation management system, um, and that will be done in collaboration with an extended enforcement staff. So that's something that's been long and needing in the overall parking program. So those are some really big highlights. Next slide, please. So just want to kind of outline where we are at with the fee structure right now. Again, this is a management fee structure. It is not a lease deal. Uh, year one is going to be 60,000. Year two would be 75. Year three would be 90. Year 405. And year five would be 120,000. And then every year if they Quick hit question. those... That's yes, sir. Clarification. That's per, is that per month or per year? Per year. Per year. Per year, sir. Sure yes, clear. sir. Right, and then they can have the ability to generate an additional $30,000, but that's based on hitting those key performance indicators. One thing I just real quickly want to, and I've accidentally let this off the slide and I meant to include it, there is a guaranteed $2 million that they have to generate for us. So all of this will be based on them hitting that $2 million mark. I just want to put that out there as well. I accidentally left it off. When I was doing the presentation, I thought about it, but then now I'm looking at it, I'm like, dang it, I left the $2 million off. So I want you to know that's one of the first and foremost performance indicators that they have to hit. Next slide, please. So I really focused in on the schedules. Um, there is actually, um, there's not 15, but there's up to, there's different schedules in the back that I kind of want to focus on because I think this is really more about what is the context and the importance of the um, agreement, the contract itself. So schedule one is actually meter parking system contracts. So these are the contracts that we will have with them. It was part of their uh, proposal process with us. That will be included in schedule one. Did I say that correctly, Terry? 
perfect. Schedule two is gonna be operating standards. Now, I think this is a really important schedule because we are actually really starting the parking program now. We have a lot of operating standards, but it's based on limited operations and single space meters. So they will actually be having to put together operating standards for the entire system. So how multi-space meters run, how we collect, all the financial side of it, as well as the citation management, how that works in, in, um, in collaboration with the court system, everything will be built into this schedule too. One thing I just want to remind the commission is that this is something that we're going to, is going to be very fluid. We're going to have a set starting, we'll be starting with set standards, but we're going to grow those standards as we build up the parking program. So we'll have set standards, but this will be something that'll constantly be growing, be very fluid with the actual program itself. Schedule three will be the meter parking system assets. So that's the total assets that we're going to have tied to the parking program as a whole. Schedule five is going to be our parking fees, which is what I just shared with y'all now. Schedule seven is special events. So as you are aware, we have quite a bit of special events that occur in our city. So we will be listing those in schedule seven. Um, and that way they know going into this agreement, they're well aware these are the these are the special events that may shut the roads down, which means meters may be shut off, which is going to be something that will not be part of that $2 million requirement. If we end up adding special events above and beyond what we are providing in this contract, they'll be able to take that off of the $2 million because it's not fair to penalize them when we didn't uh, share that up front. But it's a pretty inclusive um, special event list now. Schedule 10 is going to be our capital improvements. That's going to be the meters we're going to purchase, the software we're going to purchase, the citation management system, the handhelds, all of that. We will have an entire list of every single bit of equipment we're going to be purchasing. 11 is Schedule 11 is our business plan. Now, they do have 30 days to provide me with the business plan. So from date of contract, sign. They have 30 days to give a business plan because part of that business plan is going to be the purchasing of the equipment, having it installed, getting it in set up, getting training, all of that. And they'll have to put it together a very comprehensive plan. And they really can't do that until they pull that trigger of ordering the equipment from day one. But 30 days out from the data signature, they have to provide us a business plan. And that's how it's spelled out in Schedule 11. Schedule 12 has performance objectives in it, and that's already established. And that's part of those objective performance measures that we're requiring them to provide us to meet and receive their monthly, their um, annual um, fee pro, uh, structure. So that'll be a very important. And this is also going to be very fluid. We will be massaging this as we're moving through the program. We're, you know, with technology and opportunities, as we get better at it, we're going to have a chance to actually have stronger performance measures. So I'm looking at tweaking this as we go through the program as well over the years. Schedule 13 is going to be our key performance indicator. So I talked about that additional 30,000. We've set some pretty specific standards that they have to meet to be able to get that 30,000, and that's what will be reflective in Schedule 13. Schedule 14 is going to be the lease of the premises, so they're actually going to be leasing and some property from us to be operating their business, and just as part of the standard, we have to they have to provide them with the lease. From my understanding, it'll be a dollar, because remember, whatever we charge them is going to end up on our operating statement. We're paying for it anyway, so we're going to make it significant, but we need to show that and reflect it so that we have everybody properly covered and, and um, managed, I, uh, is a good way to put it. And then Schedule 15 is a fee structure for employees for special special events. Um, you know, we're challenged every time we have some of these big special events with not having enough employees. So we were able to say, hey, give us a fee structure if we wanted to like use some of their employees to help us with the special event. They would be able to bill us back at that set rate that they've established. And that's what you'll find in Schedule 15. So that's really above and outside, but it is a definite need we have. And as we grow the parking program, that'll become a stronger need as well. Next slide. So I wanted to kind of give you some pictures of the equipment. So this is what a standard pay station would look like. And like I said, we would actually have one per block. We would not have one per space. It looks like this. Someone would walk up and actually put in their license number, their information. They would be able to pay by credit card or cash off of this. And then when the license plate recognition comes through, they're going to be scanning the tag number. It'll match up automatically to that license plate number the individual put in. Yes, ma'am. and it takes bills, does it get changed or do we need to put exactly like a $5 bill or a 20 or? 
Um, no. We will um, we will have to um, have a consideration adjusting the rates to have a flat number. So, for example, if we're charging a dollar twenty-five now, we may either go up to two dollars or down to a dollar because we're not able to give coins back. But we will be able to give bills back, so we can give one dollars back. So, if somebody puts twenty in and they're only buying six dollars, they'll get fourteen dollars back. You're welcome. We are going to recommend, though, exact change. <laughs> it just makes it simpler. <laughs> um, but again, there's credit card options. Can you go back one more? I'm sorry. And then the slide on the bottom left, I just wanted to show you what um, is another option that will be available with this equipment will be um, a text. So if you actually go in and you sign up and you pay for it, whether it's through the QR system or online, it, if you put that information in, it'll send you a text saying your time's about to expire so that you can have the option to pay for additional time so that you don't risk receiving a citation. Um, and I, I shared that because uh, this is a great tool and it's one that our I think um, our guests and our residents would really find very valuable. I just also want to share that if someone parks in a two-hour spot, two-hour max, and they hit their two hours, they're not going to get a tax asking for additional time because they've hit the two-hour max. What I do not have up here in the equipment is the citation management equipment because we're still still deciding between two vendors of which ones we're going to be moving forward with. But once I have that, I'll bring that information back forward to you. But we will be um, selecting citation control. Um, there'll be handhelds. It'll also have a back office system as well. And we are working um, right now with the courts on how we set all of that up. So that's the only reason why I don't have that equipment here to share with y'all today. Excuse and then the, I ask a quick question? Yes, sir. Um, I guess we're starting out with static pricing. Yes. Stat okay. So, it does the system have scalability and flexibility if there was ever dynamic pricing based on demand? Yes, sir. Okay. It does. And I, that's why I put that one slide up there where it shows um, kind of innovation. I think what I like about that is you can see we can partner with Find a Bike. We can partner with Find a Scooter. We can find, we can partner with this machine actually do, tell, sharing a lot of information. So it's, it's really great. There's, this is going to be really some great technology that's going to be able to connect with a lot of our other systems that we currently have throughout the city. So I'm really excited about the innovation and the technology we'll be able to bring forward, including dynamic pricing if we move in that direction. Next slide. So I wanted to provide somewhat of a timeline for y'all. Um, it is my hope that we'll have this contract executed by July. Um, and that'll start the time clock for them. Um, by that, it's about a 12-week lead time for the purchasing of the equipment and having it delivered. So we anticipate that we'll have the equipment in by November and have it all installed by January and actually have the program up. We'll also then be coming back in February for some recommendations that'll be above and beyond what we are currently operating in today's parking program. A few things I just want to add in this conversation. That February recommendation also lines up very well with where we'll be with Connect Downtown, which is a really important study that we have going on about how to best use, use, use of the curves. Um, so I'm really excited we'll tie that in together. Also, between November and January, given that we do have some places where we ask for $1.25 and we're not going to be giving coin change back, we will be coming with a request to either adjust the price up or down so that when we actually are installing the equipment, we're doing it so that it works very um, seamlessly in the field for our guests and for our residents. So, and I anticipate that after that, I'll be back before you probably, if not every month, every other month, talking about improvements in the program as we move forward and we learn more and the technology helps us really define our operations better. So with that, I'll take any additional questions and thank you all so much for your time. Commissioner, yes. Mr. Tuff. I had the same problem. Look at legal over here. Um, thank you for your time. Thank You're you for welcome. all the updates. I did glance at the draft that we were that we received via mm -hmm. email. I did notice that some of the schedules were kind of left blank with notes Correct. saying, "Hey, we're going to update this as we have more meetings." So, are we to expect? those updates to be uh, provided to us via a new draft agreement yes, every sir. time y'all make updates to yes, it? Yes, sir. Okay, great. And, and then uh, just to follow up, um, within your timeline of wanting to execute in July, when do you think we'll have a 
kind of like a final draft. What's your your well? Ballpark? I would say our the draft that we're at now is is pretty much other than the final. Like the fill, filling in the blanks okay. is pretty much what we're at. But I think the draft contract itself is pretty much set, wouldn't you say, Teresa and Terry? There is a few tweaking, but it's it's pretty set. I mean, but we do need to update some of the schedules, and that's finalizing some of the language that will go in there. But as that's why I felt it was important that I kind of defined and laid yeah. it out for y'all. It's not going to be too far from what was explained today at all. Great. Thank you. No problem. Okay. Yes. Commissioner Woods. Thank you for all the information. Do you know in the business plan if any minority female-owned contractors and vendors are going to be a part of this process? I do not know, but I will... Um I will um, have that conversation with them. But I will tell you, most of the installation we will probably be doing ourselves. Uh, so, for example, we are collaborating with them that if we have to change out a pad to have the install the multi-space meters, and staff will actually be doing that. My staff will be doing that. Um, and then their staff would actually come in and actually, with Flowbird, who is actually the vendor, would actually be installing it. So, But we can put that out there for consideration. But I do not have that answer today, ma'am. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Yes, council member. Thank you. Thank you, director. I guess I need to pull this closer to myself. There we go. Um, I, you had mentioned uh, the the various you know schedules that are open, uh, and the deliverables subsequent to the execution of the contract. So the operating standards, mm -hmm. um, the the business plan you mentioned specifically was like a 30-day yes, deliverable yeah. from execution of contract. Um, the performance objectives you spoke to is having um, some uh, fluidity. I guess I'm... Will there be documentation and whether in this draft or otherwise, um, you know, that, you know, there's the actual kind of performance of meeting the yes. initial scope of the business plan, the operating standards. I mean, that's a lot of things that are still open yeah. um, uh, for executing a contract. So um, I'm wanting to know how you're going to kind of put those uh, expectations um, uh in writing. So um, in, today in the draft, we actually do have the performance objectives already in there. The key performance indicators is not in there yet. So I'm, I'm hoping we'll get that fine tuned this week. Um, the contract side of it will be, um, I still have, we still have to make the final decision on the citation management because part of their contract will be that schedule one. So we have to pull all that together. So I will we'll share a lot of that, I think, including the object, the operating standards that we do have set up and established will all be part of the contract and will be in there. But again, I think it needs to be fluid because as we build out the program, we're going to need to be adding a lot of operating standards. Um, so where we're at today will be provided, but that's not where I anticipate us to stay at all. But yes, ma'am, we will be putting it in there. A lot of it is actually done. We just didn't have it ready at the time that we took this and shared it with the, out with the commission. Okay. Any other? Yes. Council. Um, so regarding the, the capital aspects of this program, so the kiosk that you showed, um, with this being a management contract, is uh, are, are they suggesting this particular capital, this particular vendor, is that inextricably linked to the management contract? I mean, so I, through the contract negotiation process, it sounds like they've made a proposal of preferred vendors, but I just, you know, capital and management, you know, it's sort of operational capital assets. And so I just want to kind of understand how those are linked or not linked. Right. And um, from a funding perspective, what we have already put in, whether it's a capital spending plan or um, we contemplated through operational budget, how are we arriving at purchasing all these uh, kiosks and right. doing the infrastructure work that you said staff would do for various pads or spatially right. putting them out? How, how are we going to 
execute that um, capital piece. So on the capital side, just a little bit of information. When their proposal was put forth, they did provide recommendations on the capital equipment. Um, so, and we actually required them to do a presentation to staff to give us a chance to be able to review it and ask questions. Um, and so we actually got a full blown presentation of Flowbird. We also got, they made a recommendation of a citation management company at that time, which I did not accept. So that's why we are still um, reviewing additional citation management companies. We have it narrowed down to two and it is just a matter of the court and I um, having the conversation about what we feel is the best fit for both of us. Um, and then we'll proceed forward. They're both, they're both good citation management companies. So I think we'd be happy with either one. I'm always looking for the one that's gonna provide me the best technology at the best price. And then I, the court is really also looking forward to make sure that it's gonna function very well with their current operating system. But all of the capital improvement um, equipment that's been recommended, we required a full um, presentation, which we had, and we approved it before we moved forward with it. Um, so I was really comfortable with what they did and the technology and everything that they were recommending. It was in line with what we envisioned taking our parking program. So from the capital side, we had that. They will be purchasing the equipment on our behalf, but it will be our, we will be reimbursing them. We do have money in our operating budget to cover the capital expenses. So what will happen is they'll make the, after, after the contract's done, this will be part of the contract. They'll make the purchase and as the equipment comes in and they get invoiced, they'll bill it to us through our operating, monthly operating budget and we'll actually pay them back out of our, out of our um, spending plan that we actually already have set up in our budget. So that's how that's gonna work on that side. Right. Just real quick, and who, mm -hmm. the city owns the equipment. The city will own the equipment. Okay. Yep, and and also that's why I was very, very particular about, I wanted to make sure that all the dollars that are collected from the equipment went into the city account and not to the vendor. So it'll be in our account. That's why we're giving them three months operating um, okay. funding so that they have money to operate because they are hiring staff. We're hiring additional enforcement. We are hiring some, the office administration. We have to hire technicians. Uh, that has to be hired and that's gonna be under their purview, under the management agreement. That's where their operating ex expenses will be paid from and then they bill, they'll actually share that back every month and then we'll give them back, renew back up their fund balance so it never hits zero. Okay because we're bringing in all the revenue into our bank account. I like the money to be in our bank. Okay. Yes. I had a question. Um, yes, ma'am. In the technology section, I understand that this is a draft still. Um, there's a paragraph that states that Metro Parking and Traffic Commission can, um, that the residential parking permit process and curbside management, that could actually be, be turned over to them. What is that? process, do you see that as a part of this overall or will it make it to the final draft? I see it, it is in the draft and it will stay in there. But of course, as we, the curb management program that we're currently doing, Connect Downtown, that's going to be something we'll be bringing back before this board for consideration. That'll be part of the recommendations that I mentioned in February, kind of all lines up. That'll come back before that. That's why we have that language in there is that we have to bring all of that back to y'all for, for approval on parking permit program, rate changes, hours of enforcement, every bit of that has to come back before you. So as those opportunities and recommendations come back, we will be back before this board for recommend, for approval of those recommendations so we can go out and implement them. Okay, thank you. You're very welcome, and thank the you. The other thing is just an experience that I've had with the QR code and another city. Uh huh. And it was linked to a rental car that I had. And uh, about a year later, I was charged for um, parking in LA at the same time that I was in Nashville. Wow. So the company took care of it. Right. That was a glitch that I could see happening. Um, a lot of people come to Nashville and have rental cars. So um, just to kind of put that on the radar. No, thank you. I will, I will actually, when I get back to home, I'm going to get my pen and make a note yep. so I can make sure we don't have the same boo-boo. It can happen. Thank you. Hi. Um, I have two questions that are kind of yep. unrelated, but okay. one is uh, at the last traffic commission meeting, we approved a, a contract extension for the downtown partnership, but it was just a short uh, for another like 18 months. Yes, sir. So, because this, this draft is, uh, the management company is going to assume the 
the operations or whatever the correct term is for, for the parking garages that the city currently owns that we currently are contracting with with downtown partnership and what's the impact of the revenue of changing that. And then my second unrelated question is, I think this commission, I, without speaking for everyone, would, would probably like to have an annual report every year on the anniversary date so we can review the implementation, performance standards, are those being met, what things can we do? So I don't know if that needs to be in contract or is that just something we need to specify that we would like out of this commission. Again, I don't want to speak for other commissioners, but I sense based on my years of experience that all of us would like to get those kind of reports on a regular basis. Um, yes, sir. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. So um, in the contract, there is the ability to add the parking garages in the future. Um, it is um, my hope that we'll bring the whole parking program together, and that would include the garages um, as well. As far as what that revenue structure would look like, I cannot speak to that today, but I certainly will be bringing that information forward to this board as we move in that direction. And we have had that discussion with the downtown partnership about, that's why we actually set it up as 18 months months with them also understanding that we're going to be looking at bringing the garages back in house. We're very grateful for that partnership because in the past we really haven't had a parking program but now we're going to. So I feel we'll be in the in the appropriate place that we could manage it and um, um, provide a good revenue stream for the city as well. So to that one, to your second question, it is actually already listed in the contract that they have to provide us with an annual report as well as quarterly reports. So it is our intention that we will be back before this board annually to provide you with where the performances are at as well as also um, any changes that they would be recommending because part of their annual report or any recommendation and changes to the parking program, the way we're approaching business, technology, whatever whatever is at that time. So yes, sir, we will make sure we bring that back before this board and also to stay very transparent for the public. Thank you. Other questions? Yes, council member. Chair Green, I, I think my question is maybe for Ms. Costonis, uh, just for the, the public's understanding uh, for council. So we have before us for presentation today a draft contract. Um, and so kind of what is the next step for this commission? Um, are we recommending approval of a final contract to council? And, you know, how, how is that going to work um, as far as the kind of transparency to the community of the final contract language and so forth. Right. Um, so today, as I understand it, is really just an informational update. Um, but um, the, the the committee commission will certainly have to approve the final version of the contract um, because the, the chair um, of this committee commission will actually be the signatory on behalf of Metro to that contract because of the way the charter provides that this body is actually, you know, the manager of parking management contracts on behalf of Metro. Um, and then it will also have to go to council for approval. Right. It was my hope we would have the contract finalized and ready, but we didn't. But I felt it was important to share it with the commission so you know what's in front of us. But like I said, I feel like the meat and potatoes are pretty much here. We just need to fine tune a few things and have that ready. And I feel like at the next meeting, we'll be 100% ready. All right. Any other comments? You actually asked my next question when you, thank you. All right, anything else, commissioners? Thank you. All right, thank you, Ms. Alcorn. All right. Excuse me, did somebody out in the audience raise their hand? The next item. Would there be a way to move away from this program? Should LPR, because whenever you're talking about LPR from a, a governmental agency rather than a private entity, I think that's going to throw up our flag. Okay. Well, I, what? I'm not sure. Yeah, license plate it, reading. All right, excuse me just for a minute. Um, If we're going to, I think today was an update, and so I think when we have our 
contract review will actually state that we're having a contract review and we'll invite uh, public comments and things. And I think that would be the appropriate time to really deal with that at that, at that time. Otherwise, we'll get sidebarred here. But we want to hear from folks at the appropriate time. Okay. So we do need to make sure that on the agenda, when we're ready to review the contract, that it's very explicit that we are reviewing to approve a contract so that everybody in the city knows. Okay. All right, the next item on the agenda, because it relates to some below it, is the Connect Downtown authorize a temporary pause on new curb utilization approvals. Chairman Green, we have a we have a short presentation. Okay, that'd be great. Thank you. Who is the presenter, please? Me. <laughs> I'll be I'll be running okay, through these slides. Thank you. I hope to be very brief. Uh, it, it is actually a summary of some of the things that we shared last time as far as the overall the Connect Downtown, but it also includes some additional inventory updates and some other things that we'd like to share as well. Oh, and I'm done. Thank you. No. <laughs> I think, Corby, this might be the last slide. Do you have? Chair Green, just point of order, I apologize. Yes, Under go old ahead. business, um, I understood that you took the smart parking contract update item C first, but we had item B under old no, business. I think under the uh, revised agenda, I think, unfortunately, the paper copy is not the revised agenda. Okay. The revised agenda we are following, okay. which was. Got it, so we removed, or we moved out of yes. B to Connect. Yes, that was an indefinite deferral. Got it, thank you. Thank you for the clarification. Yes, Mr. Freeze. I'm, I'm waiting for our, our presentation to come up. There we go. So th this is an update and a little bit of an overview of what we provided last time, but I'll, I'm gonna end with what our staff recommendation is when we talk about authorizing a temporary pause on permanent uh, valet and loading zones. So go ahead, Corby, you can switch to the next one. Not switching. <laughs> so I'll say this, not switching at all, Corby. You might have to run it if you're running it from a, you might have to download it to, to run it. There we go. There we go. So who's involved? These are our, our partners with the, with our Connect Downtown study. Uh, we are working hand in hand with WeGo, uh, TDOT and the Nash Down, Nashville Downtown Partnership. They are part of our engagement as well with the Downtown Partnership, but we have, we have several technical committees that are together and actually assembling to actually do some outreach and actually good data collection as we go through here. You can go ahead and click on to the next one. So just a short overview, go ahead and click on to the next one. So from a planning context, you can see all the uh, various plans that we're working on to bring in harmony and bring together with this Connect Downtown study. We have the Metro Nashville Transportation Plan, which you know was two years ago that we got out. The Vision Zero Plan, uh, the Walk and Bike Update, In Motion, Better Bus, East. Envision East, East Bank, Restoring Second Avenue, Sustainable Sustainability Plan, and Downtown Traffic Study. These are all coming together in concert. And this here, out here on the right, you can see our vision statement. Our vision statement really is to a multimodal system for all that offers choice and better connects neighborhoods, residents, and businesses, places they need to and want to go in a safe manner. So I just want to encourage that. So we have been experiencing unprecedented, unprecedented growth. I know everyone knows that on the commission here. Uh, so we have... Uh, from 2011 to 2021, 14,000 new residents downtown, about 100, 105 million square foot of office space under construction, and we have about 5 million people attend downtown events each year. So you can go ahead and click on over to the next one, Corby. So geographic constraints, we are constrained. Here's here's just a just a snapshot. You can see a shot down Second Avenue here, where we have we have a, a lot of constraints. Right away is is limited. Uh, our topography, water, uh, of course, with the river and interstates are challenging. Modes and uses are increasing, and demand on the curbs are expanding. And ownership is 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 complicated when it comes to curb management. So you can, we are really trying to 
uh, address a diverse set of interest when we're going through this Connect Downtown study. Uh, the, the, the interest of business owners, residents, employees, the visitors that, that come to our city, event managers, sports interests, service providers, transportation companies, and, and agencies, other partnering agencies like TDOT, for example, and, and others that we work with hand in hand with, like WeGo. So this just gives you an, uh, an overview of the study area that we're actually going to be requesting requesting the pause for. So 10 plus neighborhoods, uh, 6,328 streets covering 405 miles, 31 WeGo routes, 13 miles of bike facilities, 2,000 parking meters in the, in the study area, 94 miles of sidewalk and 13% walking uh, commute mode share. So you can go ahead and click over. Corby. So what's included in our study? Uh, the, these are the bullets. Uh, we are talking about the transportation issues and opportunities in downtown Nashville today. A lot of community outreach is already uh, planned, but also have already started. Goals and evaluation tools uh, that, that will help us guide our decisions about priorities. Uh, projects for people uh, walking and rolling, biking and scooting, taking the bus and driving and parking. Uh, and better connections to businesses, communities, designation schools, homes and family and friends. And then really what we want to get uh, you know, run through the traffic and parkings are programs and policies to support people traveling downtown. We're going to be talking quite a bit about that, and we foresee actually coming back to this traffic and parking commission frequently uh, throughout the life of the study. So funding and opportunity, uh, funding and partnership opportunities is also a portion of our study. Uh, I get really geeked out, and I know I said this last time in the simulation, uh, we're actually doing an operational analysis that's actually going to do uh, simulations where we have micro simulation of, of all the operations operations of downtown in these connected neighborhoods. So I really, you know, as a traffic engineer, that that uh, that excites me to get to look at that and to see how we can optimize our operations. So you can go ahead and click over to the next one. So this is our schedule. We showed this last time. So we are going through uh, the, the projects and programs and policy right now, scenarios and trade-offs, uh, August through November. Recommendations and costs are going to be December to January time frame. So that's when we're actually going to get the re recommendations from the study that we're actually going to look. We're not going to wait to uh, we finalize the plan to move forward with our recommendations. We're actually going to move forward with the re recommendations through this traffic and parking uh, ones that are actually the purview of this commission. So. Then park, go ahead, Corby. So parking load, I just want to give you an inventory here. So this are our existing conditions. Uh, we have 120 blocks with parking, two blocks with time limited parking, 2,000 parking meters. You saw that on, on an earlier slide and 186 parking lots and garages downtown. So you can click over. So loading zones downtown, we have 52 loading zones downtown and, and 32 passenger loading valet zones downtown. This just gives you the overview of that. And then downtown, walking and biking and rolling. Um, downtown lacks safe connected bike networks. You can see here the disjointed uh, appearance of bike networks downtown. That's something that we've heard uh, frequently from our biking community is, is the connectivity of our bikeways downtown. So that's something that's a big focus with this Connect Downtown study. So using micro and shared mobility, uh, people are using those services more and more. You can see the density matrix here that we've put together based on that inventory where we have the most usage of those micro mobility components and here. Uh, you see that, that it clearly we have a, a large amount of ridership with these micro, modal, uh, faci mi micro mobility facility, um, features. You can click, <laughs> I'm trying to spit it out, sorry. There are 194 bus stops, but only one transit center in, in, in the study area. So you can see here all the bus stops that we have inventoried within the study area. In the next, go ahead and click over to the next one. And driving and parking, loading zones are, are at a premium. You can see here just a, a, a Coke truck parked outside uh, one, of our, one of our businesses downtown here. There's, there's just not a, not a lot of great opportunity on our curb space for loading zones during, in, in, uh, during business and in, uh, throughout the day. You can go ahead and click over. So what we are requesting uh, as our staff recommendation is to request the authorization from Traffic and Parking Commission for a temporary pause on new curb utilization approvals. Uh, this pause would allow for completion of the study uh, recommendations for future approvals. So we want to bring that to that. And like I said, we are looking, working and looking at that now. We hope to have that December uh, 2022 to January 2023 timeframe. However, we are looking to actually beat that date and come to the commission before that before that period. But that's what our current tr tracking is. So that this is what we uh, wanted to propose. Some background. You can go ahead and click over to the next. So in 2021, curb use applications. So we received eight. Uh, 
last year for loading zone request, and we received uh, six for valet zone requests last year. We're currently averaging about a one and a half uh, per meeting that we get a request for. So that's kind of what we're looking at as far as the current load of requests that we see. So thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Freeze. Appreciate it. Questions, commissioners? Yes, council member. Um, thank you, Mr. Freeze. I, I appreciate all that um, data and seeing all that. I, I definitely want to look at those slides again. I was up here taking pictures of the pictures um, for my reference. Um, I appreciate you, you know, coming back and, and kind of sharing the, the, the context for this um, and the desire for this pause or moratorium or however we're um, referring to it. But I guess aside from this presentation, um, I guess, you know, there's sort of the, the very practical matters, right, of people who are in the development process and, you know, whether their touch points have been at, you know, the planning department, you know, years ago as they conceived, you know, laying out their site um, or uh, at uh, NDOT, um, even probably some people touching that even when it was still called public work. So, um, I think what I'm wanting to hear or understand is very practically, you know, if you are here, what this means for you. Um, and, uh, you know, what does it mean if you contemplated coming before this commission within this nine month pause? Um, how are we going to address that fairly and transparently? Is it just nobody ever for nine months? Um, or, Right, I get a little nervous when it's like, oh, okay, well, this one's sort of important, so we're going to do that one, but we don't do it for others. So I'm wanting to understand very precisely, do we have a written uh, kind of procedural plan for this? So, yeah, so our, so our recommendation for staff for all future requests until we have the, this completion of the Connect Downtown study will be able to refer till afterwards. Uh, so the if, if you're asking about um, backing up with your question, you're asking about when is there a process in place? There are condi certain conditions that we will have to consider like life safety, life safety issues, like public safety issues. And there's actually one today on the, uh, on the agenda that actually has to do with that. We actually have the federal courthouse that is actually opening uh, and they are asking for uh, loading, uh, actually a no parking, removal of parking and actually a valet zone in front of their facility to limit actually the, uh, limit actually the space around there for public safety benefits for Homeland Security issues as well. So can you repeat the first part of your question? Because it... With your permission, Chair, yeah. Um, um, I, so, you know, there's what's on our agenda today. Um, yes. And so you mentioned the federal courthouse. We also have the Four Seasons. There's a few yeah. other here on here. Um, I guess I'm just thinking about, um, you know, fair warning for the development community. Yes. I just yes. think um, so, anytime we have ambiguity, like yeah. I just, I'm wanting to see aside from this presentation, a document that is very specific that says if this, then that for these many months, you know, what are the. I understand. Yeah. Yeah. I understand what you're saying. So I, I can say about what we have actually done as far as public outreach already as associated with this. I know that we have met with the downtown partnership and actually surveyed their membership. In addition, meeting with the Nashville Chamber of Commerce and actually having a presentation to actually to, before we actually came and presented this to the commission, that was what we wanted, the steps that we wanted to take to actually provide that notification so people aren't caught off guard by this. In addition to that, uh, you ask what the impacts would be on businesses that are affected by this. It would not impact their construction. Uh, it's, you know, they, they could move forward with their construction. It's more on the operational side day to day. They would not be able to have a permanent violation. It does not impact uh, temporary approvals of management of the curve space uh, related to special events and other things like that that come out that we actually go through the, the permitting process that does not actually come through this commission. Commissioners, any other questions? I'm sorry, I wasn't clear if the presentation to the CVC has been done already. Have you have you done that? Presentation to what now? To the CVC, the Nashville Convention of Visitors. We have, yes. Okay. You, you, you're talking about the uh, the Chamber of Commerce? Uh, the Convention and Visitors Bureau. I, that's what I thought you were saying. 
the no, no, it's the National Chamber of Commerce. The Chamber of Commerce. So yes. that that has that has that, happened. Yes. Okay. Actually, and, Director Alicon actually provided that presentation to them. Okay. Yeah, I'm just personally, I'm a little uncomfortable without understanding what the public perception is to do mm -hmm. a blanket moratorium um, without any sort of a, you know, maybe even a, a temporary solution for businesses right. that may be very far along in the process. Mm -hmm. um, that's the piece of it that seems to me it's either all the way right now without having any sort of a, a option for business. Yeah, to mm -hmm. have an option. Uh, Mr. Freed, could you discuss a little bit temper, the, the temporary permit so that everyone's kind of clear about how those operate? Because yes, a couple yes. of years ago when we were, the commission was discussing some things related to the ballet zone. And, you know, we were trying to put a little bit of a quote unquote pause on those while we came up with a policy. Mm -hmm. For, you know, during that period of time, we were in the midst of a pandemic. So the request kind of dried up, but we have some new commissioners since then, and I know there's a process where uh, businesses can obtain a temporary ballet stand prior to a more permanent ballet stand. So could you yes, elucidate we can, on we that, We can't please? provide an overview of that. Um, uh, actually, we have Rory. Uh, Actually, from our from our permitting office, actually handles that. But we, yes, we do we do actually submit have those requested submitted to us through our permit office. They are analyzed as far as operationally how they will affect. We actually look at the traffic engineering has a time has an opportunity to look at those and do an analysis of how those impact, and then they are granted on a part time basis. Do you want to hear the hear the entire process, commissioners? I mean, I wouldn't say the entire process, but just a summary, because it okay. sounds like they would be able to get a temporary. So temporary temporary permits are event you, typically event based. We have in the past before had uh, longer term temporary mm -hmm. uh, that's were subject those agreements as far as when they receive that temporary if they violate provisions that are associated with that permit, we can revoke those permits in there. But yes, we have in the past granted temporary permits that allowed for operational analysis, you know, during during that period of time when they have a temporary permit. Okay. Okay. Just I want to try to satisfy commissioner's request for information. Any uh, yes. I guess Officer just to follow Lee. up on that, the question would be if would someone's temporary permit allow them to have this during the moratorium that we have for the permanent? That's correct. Yes. Uh, but you briefly said is for special events. That's so correct. If, if somebody is, let's say we have someone from the community that's building a new structure that's going to require a new permit, mm -hmm. is that quote unquote define the special event? No. No, no, no. That. That, that is the same permitting process that we go through for lane closures, if yeah. that's what you're referring to. Lane closures yeah. or any obstruction of the right of way goes through that permitting process. Okay. Yes, council member. Um, Chair Green, so to um, Mr. Tefel's uh, question about kind of, you know, special versus temporary versus permit. I mean, I think as I've arrived on this commission, it was it was somewhat surprising to me that whether for valet permits or, you know, once granted, that was kind of in perpetuity. Um, and so I understand when it's uh, a factor in the design of someone's facility um, that, uh, that having that certainty uh, is important. But I wonder if rather than framing this as a, uh, a pause or a moratorium, we might anticipate that within this time frame of the study, it would just be clear that if you are granted a valet, um, you know, we reserve the right after further study for flow of traffic mm -hmm. and transit and whatever, that this may need to change, right? So then it's sort of fair warning um, that this valet permit or otherwise is not issued kind of in, in perpetuity, but rather, um, you know, within this time frame, given the context, the study that's going on, it's almost as though it's conditional, it's temporary. I mean, but that it, but that it's clear. Um, the expectation is is very clear. That's my concern. 
is your so your, the expectation is clear within when they're given a temporary permit what the what that means or permanent correct permit. i think okay. this commission would need to be clear that within the time frame of this study if we were to consider i mean the, so there's colleagues we could just take it completely off you know like we're not considering any right mm -hmm. the kind of an absolutist approach or i mean you mentioned life safety or special mm -hmm. events or i mean i think you could sort of tear it down and then say okay well if we're granting it in a more typical scenario it would then be temporary in some capacity right but explicitly saying that miss Costonis, i don't know if you have any thoughts on that. I was that. just going to say that the valet permits currently are annual, so they're not in perpetuity. They're just for one year, and then they're renewed. It's good. Mr. Rowan, would you mind here? stepping forward, please? And uh, no, can no, you come, you come to the, the microphone, microphone, please? <laughs> And state your name for the record, please, so everybody knows who you are. All right, got it. Okay, so typically what we do is if it's a temporary permit, uh, if they, it's just like for, a, let's say it's a one-off, I'm going to use an example like the Country Music Hall of Fame. They may have an event at the Hall of Fame. They want a, a valet on on Fifth Avenue, or now it's Representative John Lewis Way South. So we would issue that with the limit, and it would we would look at it based on how many vehicles they're going to take, how many uh, valets they're going to employ, and what the time frame is, and if we have any other events. And if we can approve it, then they pay for a lane closure, but with the description there for a valet. And then we communicate that to the police department so they're aware of what's going on in case something else is going on in the downtown. But that's typically how we would do like a one-off or like it's not a, a long-term facility like they just is started a restaurant and they're going to start a ballet. It's part of their plan, but, you know, it's not it's not the same thing as that. It's so and there is a limit because it's specific to that one date or the dates that they're going to do it. There's there's another one. It's Ruby. It's on it's in a park. It's on Blakemore. And they sometimes do a ballet there. And we really wouldn't let someone do a ballet there typically during the day. But sometimes we have to do that because there's not parking facility. It is a metro inside of a park. So that's kind of how we handle it. And uh We've always worked with the police when we did the temporary valets where if we had like a restaurant that wanted to start one, we would try it out and then they would be notified and then they would evaluate it based on everything else going on. And if it caused traffic issues with respect to them, then we would, I mean, it could be anything from the valets not having enough uh, staffing to to get to cars and there's too many cars parked on the street or uh, they're not typically valet and they're just parking them there. And so that's happened sometimes. So that's how we typically handle that. So, you know, it's, uh, it's, pretty much the same evaluation. There's a form that we use for that, that they fill out that, you know, tells us what they're doing, how long, you know, how far the parking lot is, you know, how many cars are going to take, all that goes into it. And then, you know, that would be how we would handle it. Is so that piece of answer? it would not be disrupted. Right. That is correct. It will okay. not be disrupted. So we're only talking about, and again, you shared with us that last year we only got six Six valets and requests, correct. That's and eight it. in eight loadings and request. Okay, so we're okay. So we're talking about just tabling that for the duration of the study. That's correct. And okay, this might be a dumb statement. I, sometimes when I speak my brain, my, my if I speak my what's in my head, I get in trouble. But I, I just I, I have to say this because it's what I'm thinking, and it might be really dumb and I might get kicked out of this commission, but um, six, six, so we're saying six uh, valet applications are gonna disrupt this whole study, that we can't leave it open to accept six applications on average? It's a good question. I, I, it's a dumb question, but no, it's no, kind of what I'm question. thinking. No I question mean, it, is a dumb question. Because like, it just, what, what we're, what we're saying sounds a lot worse than what it is, right? A moratorium, public, you know, yeah. it, it sounds worse than what it is. But the reality is we got to do this study and there's not a lot of applications. Well, what is the effect? So 
when you actually approve a valet zone and, and it does change the flow of traffic in front of that business. So that, that, that is what we're concerned with is actually the operations and actually we, we want to not pre prevent, we want to not grant permanent uh, approvals for those so we can actually decide strategically based on our analysis where those need to be, where the limitations of those zones and timing needs to be. All right. Mr. Alcorn, if you could kind of speak to what is the rationale, which yeah. I think is what we're after, what is the rationale for basically putting a freeze into effect until whenever it is, six, seven, eight months out. Thank please. you very much. Diana Alicorn, Director of Transportation Multimodal Infrastructure. Um, so the rationale is, is just that, and believe it or not, granting a valet, so you have a brand new restaurant that's maybe isn't a restaurant today, but it wants to be a restaurant, it wants valet, and it wants to put it out there, but it would actually is a disruption. It's very hard to give something and then take something away. So part of what the outcome of this study is, is to look at what is the best use of our curb from a valet perspective, from a loading, unloading, how we can maybe even have collaboration of valet companies working together. You know, the thought is you can drop your car here, you walk over here, you can call and get your car over there. So that's all gonna be part of the conversation tied into this. And that's why we're just saying, we really do not wanna give any permanent valet or any permanent loading, unloading at this time. Time. We want the analysis and study to be done, the simulation as, uh, as uh, Mr. Fries had laid out in his um, study, so that if we give it and we have to take it away, that's very hard to do. And so temporary is, is one way of doing it. You know, so if a moratorium is something this board is uncomfortable and they want to do a temporary, but I found it much harder that if we say, okay, we're going to give this to you now, but oh, by the way, in seven months, we may take it away. And this is why that's a little bit hard for a business to, to take on. And just remember some of these valets that are being asked of now, they weren't necessary on the prior use. The uses of the built downtown areas are changing and they're saying they need valet. We have one one street right now at peak time in the evening, you can't even get down the street because they're doing valet parking in the middle of a travel lane. And they also have valet parking on the curb on the other side and we have construction going on. It's just, that's the reason why we have this congestion that's occurring in the downtown core, but not just in the downtown core, it's now flaring out. So the thought was let us get through the study so we can have a very strategic approach and bring that back for recommendation. And so temporary is again, temporary, but still it's very hard to give something and then take it back if it's not the right fit for how we should be using the curb. And the curb is very, is, is there's a lot of demand on the curb right now and we just really cannot meet everybody's demand and that's part of reason why we're doing the study. Thank you. Council member. So I think, you know, when we're speaking about this, you know, Chief Engineer Freeze, you use the word permanent, right? So there that's is correct. kind of a, you know, yes, colleagues, technically it's annual, but you know, the, the presumption has been in the past, if issued, it was, though maybe not technically in perpetuity, that was somewhat of a presumption. And so you're speaking to Director Alarcon, the you know concern around, given that the perception is that it's permanent, then it's hard to take it away. But I guess what I would say is that if you engage with it um, in awarding it, that it is conditional and further, if we are enforcing the problematic ones today. I would say if there's somebody that has a valet permit that's conducting valet in a travel lane, then they should have their permit revoked. So it, I, I guess I understand that some of them are problematic now, but are they problematic because we don't enforce them? And if we set the level of expectation that something is conditional or temporary in the context of this study, and if it, you know, as in all valet permits, I think if they're not being conducted appropriately, they could be revoked. Um, I, I just wonder if we were being more focused on the enforcement of the ones we have today and anybody who is potentially caught without, you know, a, a sufficient warning understood that those were conditional, then if that's not perhaps a middle path. So um, thank you for that question, um, council member. So we are enforcing. Um, the one particular valet I, was, I spoke to was actually granted by this board. <laughs> for operation in the travel lane. And those uh, and 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 that's part of the reason why we're doing the study is because 
you know, and I am, I've heard this commission say that, well, how does this affect, you know, if we grant this, how does it affect this? And they're really in the past, there was really no comprehensive thought behind it. And that's what this study is going to bring to the table and allow us to really have that healthy conversation about what is the best use. And also, you know, given what Mr. Free shared about where we were, you know, 10 years to where we are today has even put more demand on the curve as a whole. So uh, we are doing the enforcement. We do and have shut down. I think as Rory said, if someone is not having the appropriate number of staff and the cars are backed up, we will take and actually serve them and, and, and act on that. So we are doing the enforcement side. And, but there's a lot of past that has created the problems we have today. And please forgive me, I don't mean anything <laughs> derogatory about that, but that's part of the reasons why we wanna do the study. And we just felt like if we gave someone a, a you know, the authorization to run a valet, there is the expectation that they'll be able to continue it. And that may not really be in the best interest based on the outcome of what this study will show. Um, there may be loading zones we've given in the past that do not make sense that we would want to push back on. I mean, we have places that people can, and vehicles can go and unload and they choose to do the street and not the alleyways are not the loading docks. And so that's part of the, of this program that's going to also come back with recommendations and policies policies that we'll bring before this commission because y'all will be the body that will be actually, you know, saying yes or no. So we're going to need that in. And that's why I just feel it's really important to tie this all in together so we have a comprehensive look. Okay. Uh, yes, Commissioner Woods, please. I support this because it seems like we've gotten to the point in this city, it's like, I'll do it and ask forgiveness later. Uh, and it is a mess. And we could have made mistakes in the past with good intentions, but it's a mess, and I support this. Okay. All right, just real quick, I just want to say, two and a half years ago, we had a set of meetings about permit parking, uh, valet stands, and uh, the parking meters. And we asked at every one of those for a map. And this is the first time I've ever seen a map. So we are making some progress because you never, you don't know what to manage until you know what it is you have to manage. So with that being said, is there a motion on this uh, item, please? Sorry, um, I was just wondering if there are members of the public that are here to speak to this. Am I speaking okay. to say that? So Yes, You're, thank you I'm for, <laughs> I was maybe moving things along. Okay. So. And Terry, <laughs> just the point of order as well. I mean, the order of our agenda, I mean, well, we, ha we have items here today. Can you speak to right, what to it would mean if we were to vote Cost on this Yes, now? that was a question been popping around in my head. So what's the, uh, if, should we, move to vote on this now or should we wait to vote on this till after we hear these other items that have this impact or does it matter? Um, well, I mean, I think that's at the discretion of the commission, but it it would make sense. I mean, you, you've approved your um, agenda, but you can change that, of course. And thank you, uh, Commissioner. So is there anyone here to speak to this item? You had stood up. Yes, come forward and state your name for the record. And that's why we work together to make sure that the chair doesn't keep moving stuff along too quickly. Right. I understand. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> chair, uh, Chairman, this is actually item, uh, item, a new business item. Here, if you want to, if you want to know which one that is. Okay. Are they actually here to speak about their new business item, or are they here to speak about I, I the moratorium? I to speak on the moratorium. Okay. Okay. So, please state your name for the record, please. Okay. Sir. My name's Doug Sloan. I live at six three five four Torrington Road. Okay. Here in Nashville. My name is Catherine Bird. I'm with Steve Rutledge. Okay. I, I'm I'm with Waller. Um, yes. Uh, so. Um, a little bit of history. Uh, I'm former planning director uh, for Metro uh, before uh, Director Kemp. And uh, the, a project in particular that I will be speaking on today is uh, the Four Seasons Hotel that's uh, between First and Second Avenue. But before I get to that, I, I, 
city building is, is hard. Uh, it is very difficult uh, to manage a city to, and from a planning standpoint, to predict what a city is going to do. I'm sure all of you knew that we would go through this growth spurt that we've gone through over the last 10 years before it happened, right? Uh, I don't think anybody knew that we were going to see the growth spurt that we've just had. Uh, and so a lot of what you have to do in city building is you've got to build the plane while you're flying. Uh, and it's very difficult to do. And if you get the opportunity to land the plane and then repair it, well, that's, that's great. Uh, but that doesn't happen very often. Uh, you have to deal with the, the situation you have in front of you and keep moving forward. Um, I, I'm speaking against this because I, I, I do have concerns about a moratorium that is a blanket moratorium across the board when there are a wide variety of situations that exist out there. One situation that you're going to, uh, that's not my case, but you're going to uh, hear about later today, is the, the new federal courthouse and how the, the loading and the lo unloading and, and how they operate. That's a very unique situation uh, that a moratorium doesn't allow the space for. Uh, the case that I do hope to get a chance to speak to you later about today um, really was born from a, a decision that I made and, and the Planning Commission endorsed. Uh, when this project, uh, the Four Seasons uh, project, came in front of me as a planning director, uh, my goal was to not have any conflict points with pedestrians and vehicles uh, for the as far as I could get on First Avenue. The city was building a amphitheater. They were building a park. Uh, it's huge open space right across the street from this project. And I wanted to push all the traffic on to 2nd Avenue uh, and try to make that pedestrian friendly and where we could close it for events and not have to worry about can people get in or out of these buildings? And so now, the, the, as they're getting close to completion, there are no curb cuts from Sigenthaler Bridge all the way to KVB on First Avenue. Uh, sounded like a great idea at the time from where I sat, uh, but it turns out maybe not so great. Uh, one of the other ideas was that we were going to try to get Second Avenue back to, I'm sure if you've lived in this city very long, you've watched Second Avenue one way, one direction, one way, another direction, two ways. And one of the things that we saw as Broadway continued to get busier and busier was we should look at maybe coming to here and seeing about 2nd Avenue between Broadway and KVB becoming two-way, which is uh, the pinnacle was built with that in mind as well. A large garage exit from their building is on 2nd uh, on Avenue with that anticipated. And so I did instruct them to go back to, the, to redesign their building. They had, they had drives on 1st Avenue. They had, then after they tried to drive on First Avenue, and I said no. Uh, then they tried lay-by lanes, and I said no. Uh, and so they built it without anything. And so consequently, and we told them, we want you to activate the street. So we want restaurants, we want retail, we want all this on First Avenue, yet we're not going to give you any way to actually pull the cars in from there. Uh, and there were discussions about, hey, we'll get Second Avenue turned around, that'll help with your traffic coming out. And we'll, we'll work with you on a our uh, valet out in front because we thought that would work at the time. And they built their building with that understanding, with those, with those promises that we would do those things. Now, I, I'm not the planning director anymore. Y'all's current planning director is absolutely fabulous. I cannot say enough good things about her. Uh, and, and my experience with NDOT so far has been nothing but fantastic as well. I'd, two organizations I think y'all should be very proud of having. I just worry about a moratorium uh, that doesn't look at these different, uh, the two examples that you have on your agenda today, a moratorium simply doesn't provide the, the space for those to be considered by this body. And, and that's what I would really request, that you allow that space to exist. Um, and if, even if it's a, a one-year uh, permit uh, that allows them to exist while the study goes on, and then at the back end, the, the city and, and this body says that that doesn't work, then, I, then we need to deal with that citywide. It's not gonna, if it's not going to work here, it's probably not going to work in other places too. And the bad news will just have to be shared. Uh, as former planning director, I share bad news quite a bit with developers. Uh, it's just part of the gig. Thank you, Mr. Sloan. Thank you. Um, I'm with the Rutledge. We are going to be the... Um, 
third party operator restaurant at the Four Seasons. Um, we're very excited to be a part of downtown Nashville and to be in this community. Um, as uh, Mr. Sloan stated, our building plans were we're conducted with the assumption that we would be able to have a valet lane in front of the building for customers to be able to access um, our restaurant. So um, when I was at the previous meeting last month and I heard the, um, the speak of the moratorium, um, as somebody that works with that business, I was obviously concerned. Um, and, you know, especially since we had built the building in the way that we did based on prior um, prior conversations. And you know, as he alluded to, I know things change. That's just the nature of a really, really popular, awesome city. Um, but we do request that you take our um, application into consideration. Um, if we are going to do this, this study, I think that it, you know, if this one valet application, this one valet lane is going to cause that much of a disruption, I would, I would feel like that's something that the study would want to take into consideration and have it be a part of the study, um, especially, uh, you know, if, if, if that's such an area of concern. Um, and then again, if at the end of the year, on an annual basis, the, the permit needs to be um, renewed and the study finds that there's a, you know, a better way to deal with this, then absolutely I would, you know, we would be open to discussing that. But it, I hate to use the word unfair because it seems like a childish word, but to impose a moratorium at this moment would uh, seem very unfair, you know, based on the, um, the planning that we've done and uh, the, the conversations that have been had before. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Well, yes, Ms. Costales. I, I was just maybe going to expand a little bit and, and say that the, um, the valet parking permit, and I haven't double checked the code section to confirm this, but I'm assuming loading and unloading as well. Valet parking is under um, Chapter 1241, loading and unloading is under 1248. Um, the process, if, if you have an annual permit, the process for revoking that is like a full due process hearing before this commission. If you have the kind of um, a lane closure permit that, that was, would be used as kind of a, a temporary permit, um, you, don't, you have the staff being um, a little more nimble in that they're able to um, adjust those directly without having to come back before this commission. So that, that might be the significant difference in terms of being able to issue lane closure permits on a temporary basis that would function like temporary valet stands in a way, but but would be subject to staff review and revocation as opposed to commission review and revocation within that um, one year period or moratorium period as, as appropriate. Um, so, um, you know, I, th I think that that might be the issue. Okay. Um, so, I mean, I've kind of surveyed you, if, if you all want to proceed with these individual requests before coming back to the, we'll call it moratorium request or how y'all would like to proceed, I am open to suggestions. Yes, council member. I think what I am struggling with while I've appreciate the presentation. I appreciate understanding the context, but, you know, uh, questions uh, or, or um, information like Ms. Costonis just gave, I, I really, I am looking as a commissioner for a, a greater level of precision, a specific document that would say within this study period, if issued this on a temporary basis, then the revocation is this, revocation. Like, I don't feel comfortable as a commissioner voting on something that we've just kind of spoken about and, I mean, a great and helpful presentation. But, um, you know, those of us on council, you know, like, I need a, a document that I am affirming, that I know that the public can see and understand. Um, and so that's what I'm voting on, this process in this precise. I, I can't just conceptually kind of vote 
for something um, uh, like this. It's not that I don't think we should consider it. It's not that I don't think we should implement it in some fashion. I just think we need a very specific and precise document that says this is how we will implement it. I think that needs to be put out into the public um, on our associated with our agenda, and then we we vote on it at another. Um, meeting. It's not that I'm not supportive. I just don't think we've been sufficiently clear or precise with how it would be implemented. So um, I'm personally am not um, prepared. If I had to vote on it today, um, I, I would vote against right. it. So, Ms. Costones, would there be any kind of document like that that could exist, or is it the case since the Traffic and Parking Commission has the authority to grant or not grant these items. Right. Um, so, so, so absolutely. Clarify the charter and kind of where we stand. Um, so absolutely, the um, the charter gives the um, commission the authority to do various functions that are delegated to them by ordinance. And then chapters of the code that were adopted by ordinance um, give you specific authority over valet parking and loading and unloading zones. Those are, as I said, chapter um, 1241 and chapter 1248. Um, so yes, like all... all uh, all of those types of permits are, are privileges. You know, the public right of way is the public right of way, and, and the public safety is always going to trump them. But um, in terms of due process, the, the process of, of if you give a permit under um, 1241 or 1248, and, you know, that, that is like at least kind of a a little bit of an annual interest that they, they, they deserve some due process before it can be revoked. Um, and the same is not necessarily true with lane closure permits, which I, which I think would actually be authorized under Chapter 1320 of the Metropolitan Code. Um, and um, like I said, those are more um, nimble. They're more um, uh, done by staff, basically. Um, and so um, the... Um, the, I think the question would be whether we would be issuing a moratorium on permits under chapters 1241 and 1248 while still allowing permits under chapter 1320 to be issued to serve essentially the same purpose but on a, on a more temporary and like, I don't want to say permanent because it's not permanent, but like a, 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 a more um, sort of guaranteed um, oh, basis okay. at least well, for the year. So, I mean, legally... From the charter, I mean, there's been no granting of a valet stand even when this building pulled a permit to start building. Is that correct? That is correct. That is correct. So, I mean, unfortunately, or for whatever, this is not the first time that this body, things have been brought before us to approve based on the planning commission having approved something. I mean, you know, not to get into jurisdictional thing, but where there's this underlying assumption that there's going to be some kind of lane closure or a valet stand or some other kind of thing that this commission has to approve that's part of a planning thing, and then it's, one could say, dumped in our laps. Oh, I would say it's, it's very clear in the code that it is this commission that has right. the authority to grant those types right. of permits. I mean, no one wants to be obstructionist, but at the same time, you know, there seems to be some planning implications made by the planning commission about what other bodies are going to do. This is and, true. I've <laughs> seen this many right, times. Right, because we've had long conversations in this commission about the impact of how planning was done, for example, 12th Avenue and its impact upon parking, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know... Uh, it, in the ideal world, all this stuff would be integrated, and it, but we don't live in an ideal world. So that's um, so. I mean, that provides some other context to kind of where we are um, with this. So, thank you, Ms. Custodes. Okay. Is sure. there? Yes. So I, I would like to add that. To my knowledge, I mean, it was news to me today that it actually had been discussed in the planning before the planning commission. So we we did uh, we did not know prior to today that it actually was. I, I'm not even sure if it actually went through the planning commission and was approved. 
I, I can't say that for sure because I, I have not heard that. Some illumination of this point. <laughs> well, please. no, no, yeah. Let, I, I'm, not, me, uh, I'm not, no one here is trying to throw any other no, body and, under some proverbial bus, but I just. No, Chairman, I, I, no, I want to make sure that uh, maybe I, I misspoke. Uh, I, I did not mean to imply that the Planning Commission approved Valet Lane on, on First Avenue. That did not happen. Uh, so if I said something that, that led you to believe that, I apologize. That, that did not happen. Commissioner Woods. Uh, thank you. Uh, I think it's very exciting about the new business coming here, but what's it designed so that the valet people... Is there no space within the parking garage of the Four Seasons to handle this so that you don't have to stop traffic? Uh, you know that people can pull in, val I mean, this is the Four Seasons, valet their car and so take care of it internally. Not on First Avenue. You'd have to go around the block uh, to Second Avenue uh, to be able to do that. Uh, there, there's no garage opening on First Avenue. Uh, so why do we, I mean, again, is this just for the restaurant? Yes, ma'am, this is just for the restaurant. It's The restaurant isn't owned by Four Seasons. It's just a condo out part of that building. So could they go around and go in the garage and then come to your restaurant? Yeah, yes. They, they self-park? Yes, they, they, they can. I mean, you have to, you don't have a valet for the restaurant within the, I mean, within no. the. You know, I, I do think it, it it is worth uh, also stating that during those conversations, they dedicated over an additional eight feet of their own property uh, to widen that pedestrian, the, the public right-of-way there. Uh, Point the, of order, Chair. Are we discussing the moratorium or are we discussing we're, we're, the Four Seasons I, I application? Think that, I think because that Commissioner I, Woods had a question. I appreciate, that, and I think this situation yeah. is illustrative of the moratorium question, and so yeah. I understand how they've become somewhat um, they become conflated. They've become somewhat conflated, yes. But um, I, think, um, okay. I think the motion that's before us is regarding um, uh, well, the moratorium. But I, 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 what don't I don't think we have a motion yet. Oh. Okay. There's not been a motion made or seconded at the present time on the moratorium request. So may I make a motion? Uh, you may make a motion. Okay. Um, I would move uh, that we defer one meeting requesting that staff prepare a precise plan of how this would be implemented with Ms. Costonis, whether it's 12.41, 12.48, that would contemplate, um, you know, whether conditional or temporary within, you know, okay. what the charter allows. But again, a document, and then that would be what we are voting on rather than just kind of okay. conceptually. All right. So. You have a mo is it correct? You have a motion to defer for a month. Is that correct? Yes. Is there a second? Second. There is a first and a second. So is there further discussion of this motion? Uh, just to include uh, chapter 13.20 as well into, because I believe that was referred to as well. Another question. Yes. Are we deferring all the other items? Will that be a possibility on the other items? I think we'll discuss the other items one at a time. And I, you know, that could always be a possibility. I'm just curious about the yes. staff recommendations, right. you know, that we have right. in front of us from engineers and scientists. <laughs> so, yes. So, and I think, Chair Green, again, my motion includes. It, I, that that document, like, so that next time we have something specifically that we're voting okay. on. So. I understand. Okay. We <laughs> need to make sure the minutes reflect that. Okay. So we have a motion to defer for a month with a request that there be specifications provided as to the moratorium. Is that an accurate summation of your motion? And we have a second. Okay. Any further discussion? We'll call the vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. We have a one-month deferral on the moratorium. 
Okay. The next item on the agenda is we have two requests that from Homeland, I'm going to assume they relate to General Services Administration. One is to authorize a new parking restriction around the perimeter of the Fred Thompson Federal Courthouse and Federal Building, no parking or standing anytime with the tollway restrictions that start on the south side of Church Street at Polk Avenue to Rosa L. Parks, then it's on the east side of Rosa L. Parks to Commerce Street, then it's on the north side of Commerce Street to 7th Avenue North, then it's on the west side, 7th Avenue North to Church Street, and then it's approximately 90 feet along the south side of Church Street, requested by U.S. General Services Administration. So I would assume this is the entire perimeter of the federal courthouse building that is correct okay we do have we do have someone represented is there someone from gsa gsa here today yes okay all right any is there a motion by any move to approve is there a second second any discussion all in favor aye aye, aye. The second item is to authorize a new passenger loading zone on the south side of Church Street between Polk Avenue and 7th Avenue North, approximately 90 feet in length, requested by the U.S. General Services Administration. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. We have a first and a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Those two items are approved. The next item is the violation lane on 151 First Avenue South for the Rutledge at Four Seasons requested by Metropolis. I move to defer. We have a motion to defer. Is there a second? Second. We have a first and a second. Is there any further discussion of this item? Yes, council member. Um, so I guess my question comes in um, some of the issues that were raised uh, earlier um, from a time perspective. Um, I know this is nearing uh, completion. And so I guess I just wanted to um, inquire, um, you know, I, I think part of the concern in deferring the um, pause or the moratorium was that we were potentially catching people who were in process right. that had certain expectations based on conversations right. with planning and otherwise. And so oh. um, I would hope that the I, I would not support the deferral motion because I think the, the you know, my intent or the spirit of deferring the uh, moratorium was that we could take up these uh, things that are caught well, in between. I think what would be helpful would be to hear from the parties as far as what's the timing of their request and when was their expectation of being able to start. Yeah. So welcome back. Please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm again, Catherine Bird with the Rutledge. Um, as far as timeline goes, we plan on again tentatively with construction things change, um, but uh, tentatively opening on June fourteenth. Correct. Monday. Or Monday the 13th. Monday. I'm sorry. Monday the 13th. Um, so we initially were thought we were going to be on the on the April agenda to to have this. Um, put in front of you guys, but I think that we missed missed the deadline by a day. <laughs> um, so uh, the time we would need to have this, we'll ideally have this approved at, at this meeting. And that was that was what we've been planning on since I did have the confirmation that we want were on this agenda. Um, if if it were deferred, I I would feel like, it, you know, the moratorium would kind of preempt or even just the deferral of the moratorium would kind of preempt our application. Um, just the fact that you, you know, we wanted to discuss it later would affect this other specific and separate agenda item. Yes, yes and Mr. Sloan. I, I, I know that I've already mentioned a lot of the things that led to this. This, this. 
design of the building uh, started in 2016, uh, included in the design of this building. Uh, I asked and they, and they approved faucet outlets here uh, underneath the Sigenthaler Bridge and drains so that they could help facilitate a, uh, a farmer's market. Uh, for downtown in that location, uh, they increased the the sidewalks. Uh, can, can we please speak to the valet? Okay, standing question, uh, please. Sir. And and and, and I, I am because it was part of the the back and forth uh, about trying to make this a pedestrian friendly environment and not putting lay by lanes out in front of this building um, and pressing as much of the vehicular traffic as we could uh, where there aren't conflict zones over to 2nd Avenue or what we'd hope would be fewer. Uh, Kurt Revelette representing the Rutledge. Uh, one thing, Ms. Woods, I believe you mentioned earlier was talking about with the valet and how that would potentially stop traffic there on front. But as you cross under uh, the pedestrian bridge, it actually turns to two lanes headed back up um, north towards KVB. So what we are, are asking uh, is keeping the valet there in the far right lane and it would actually keep a lane of traffic open so it, it would not block traffic traffic moving up the street there. Um, I visited the site last week and what my, I'm still a little unclear there, because behind the barricades and fence, it was hard to tell. Are there any, are there or are there not any curb cuts on this sidewalk place? Just, I just wanted to be clear. It's hard to, it was hard there to tell not. last week. There are not. Just wanted to be just want to be clear. Okay. They're not. Okay. And the lane pattern here is the traffic on the side where the valet is, is moving from the north side, moving south towards KVB. Is that correct? Yes, sir. It would be headed up uh, towards their Demumbrium and KVB. Okay. Okay. Any other comments from commissioners? I'd like to hear from staff. So, as before, when we talked about the pause on temporary, we, we want to pause on permanent parking. We would prefer to defer this until we complete the complete our downtown study because of the operational impacts of this. It is actually taking a lane of traffic out in front of this facility on on First Avenue. So that operationally, that's what our concerns were. Do you think a deferral of one month will make any difference to staff? Okay, thank you. Yes. Uh, Commissioner, you had a question. Well, I'm just looking to see if there might be the solution under 13.20 um, for a project that's this far along. Um, that. Is it a major impact to traffic, or could it be, as, as someone mentioned earlier, that it could a be... A temporary permit? Yeah. Temporary. Is that what you're asking? Right. Because there are temporary permits. There are temporary permits. Because the next traffic commission meeting is Monday, June 13th. That's correct. And when is it scheduled to open? Monday. That exact so, day. <laughs> so we're, we're set to close on the space we are about purchasing, so we're set to close on June 1st, um, and then we're set to open June 13th, mm. which is why we were on the meeting for today. All right. Yes, council member. Thank you, Chair. Um, I wanted to ask staff, um, when I look at kind of the Google uh, Street View of this, um, I know there's kind of uh, the, the construction fencing, um, but Mr. Sloan, um, they had spoken to a, doing a wider sidewalk because we want First Avenue really to respond more to the river and have cafe seating. And that's something we hear from the community um, that they definitely want downtown. How much when they, uh, when they have their finished curb line, what is the right of way between the curb? Um, I know we're north south, we have two lanes, but what is the space there? We don't have that currently. We can bring that to you. We don't have an answer to that. So we have somebody asking for a valet lane and we we don't know the width. 
if I could, um, Diana Alarcon, director, are you asking for the right of way from curb to curb? Yes. Okay, so you have two lanes of traffic going um, southbound and two lanes of traffic going northbound. Those lanes are at 10 or 11 feet, do you know? They're 11 They're feet. 11 feet, so you're looking at approximately 44 feet of curb to curb and okay. the right of way there. So 11 feet because that's our standard or given that so much of downtown is constrained. I mean, sometimes they're 10, sometimes they're nine and a half, yeah. sometimes they're... So, so ideally we'd like for it to be 10, but in the downtown we want at least one to be 11 to handle emergency and bus vehicles because of the, that. So um, we, the standard has been in the past 11, but in our complete street initiatives, we will be looking at compressing that down to 10. Okay, so between the curb at this location, it is approximately, it's either 40 or 40, 40 feet or 44 feet. Okay, 40 to 44. From curb. Excuse me, from curb to curb. Okay, okay. and Chair Green, I mean, I, I guess yep. what I sense coming up sometimes, and I, you know, we've kind of seen this on the council side sometimes, is, um, and one of the reasons I think council supports a DOT, right, is a little bit of the disconnect between conversations that happened at planning and then what's going to happen in, you know, plans review later at then public works. And then after that, the Traffic and Parking Commission, right, which historically, to your point, Commissioner, you know, has been a little perfunctory. You know, it's just sort of like, oh, well, all these things are all whatever, and now you got to approve the ballot lane, you know. So I think we're kind of walking that back a little bit in, in my view. But what I think... I, I do think we have a little bit of a process problem, all due respect to former director Sloan, because I feel like when things are in review at planning, right, and you say to those folks, well, we don't want ingress, egress on first and on second and, and, and. So, you know, build your sidewalk wider, great, that's good. I mean, that's good from a planning perspective. Pull your stuff over on second, great. Consolidate your ingress and egress, that's good. Um, but, you know, you all make the suggestion, do your valet. That becomes a presumption through the process when it gets to public works, you know, and then when it gets to us. So um, I feel like commissioners, like we're moving in a direction of having better process. It's more clear what the expectations are along the way. Respectfully, I, I just feel like we're a little bit in this between place where people have operated under certain presumptions, which I know are technically not official, right? Like it, it's not official till it gets here and we approve the valet lane. But um, I, I would like us to consider something that is uh, temporary. Um, and then I would also like us to make sure from an NDOT perspective that we're not giving people the impression that, you know, and or we just think about how this works okay. entirely. Well, so I, I will respectfully disagree that we've been functionary. Again, I'm going to go back to my point. Many cases, I think this commission has been operating under situations that other departments or commissions have created, uh, handed down to us in the lack of integration. And we attempted to address these issues several years ago by starting to discuss ballet stands and the whole curbside several years ago and came up with a ballet stand. So uh, we have a motion that's a first and a second to defer this item. And my understanding is a temporary permit could be granted. Is that correct, Ms. Costonis? That's okay. correct. Okay. So even if we vote to defer, if there's a temporary permit that could be handled with That staff. could be handled for their opening day. Okay. And now I understand staff said makes no difference on what your recommendation is going to be. Then I'd like to withdraw my motion to defer and go get a vote. Okay. What would you... I'm, are you requesting that we vote on, please? I think whether or not to grant a valet stand. Okay, so. So I'm just saying, rather than there was a motion to defer, right, uh -huh. and there was a second. So we need to vote on that motion. Or she can withdraw her motion. Right, I vote to withdraw my motion because staff's recommendation after a deferral is not going to change. Okay. 
we would still have a valet stand request sitting out here that has to be voted on. Is that correct? I just want to make sure I'm clear right. on what we're trying to move towards. Right. Okay. So I'm with All right. So is there a motion to approve or deny the valet stand? I vote to I make a motion to deny. Okay. We have a motion to deny. Is there a second? Now, from a point of view of understanding, denial means it's it's wouldn't happen. Is that correct? How what would be the process of coming back to the commission? Let me just pull up chapter twelve forty one real quick so I can Don't mean to be <laughs> answer correct. that accurately. <laughs> I'm trying to um, make sure that if the um, permit is denied for this year, they can still come back next year and ask for it. All right. So is there a second to the motion to deny? There is no second. I, I do not see any reason why they could not come back next year. There's no second third motion. Is there another motion on this item? Chair, I I guess I would look we, to... Oh, yeah, go ahead. I, I guess I would look to Ms. Costonis for some assistance with the motion, um, but I would like to move approval but with some clarity around a, a, a temporary nature or I, I don't I don't know um, the appropriate way to uh, and we approve a temporary so ballet stand you all can't um, kind of alter what the code says because that's adopted by council by ordinance um, so if we're doing it under chapter 1241, we would have to follow the procedures set forth by chapter 1241. If you do it under chapter 1320, and again, you all don't even have to do that. Staff can do that. You can grant a temporary lane closure permit that would essentially function as a valet stand, but um, would be um, subject to staff's discretion. Because we do have an agenda item that we have to act upon, okay, because we have people who are petitioned to put it on, make sure that they met their criteria. So we had a motion to defer that was withdrawn. We had a motion to deny that did not get a second. So that leaves, is there a motion to approve? Okay. Uh, yes, Commissioner. I'm sorry, I'm just a little confused again. Um, so are we back to approving the original motion? The motion to defer was withdrawn. Right. The motion to deny did not get a second. So to be the remaining option is motion to approve. My own motion to defer? Yes, you may make a motion to defer. Is like there a motion to defer or they make a, a for a temporary permit? So we have a motion to second.
Okay, we're back on. So we have a motion to defer for, to the next meeting, and we have a second. All in favor. This is still connected to the moratorium. No. No, this is the this is this ballet stand request. I understand, but the the staff recommendation is connected to the moratorium, correct? That is correct. That is correct. Okay. So if we're not voting on the moratorium, we voted to defer the moratorium for thirty days, mm -hmm. pending a more detailed analysis from staff on the request. So that item is disposed of. We have approved two items around the Fred Thompson courthouse building. Mm -hmm. So now we're trying to consider the valet stand request by the Rutledge. That, and there's a motion to defer till for 30 days, till the next meeting. With the option to approve, yeah. With there's a deferral that comes back to us, and we have the option to either approve, deny, or mm. another action. But they have the option to, to do the temporary permit. Yes. Okay. Based on the staff recommendation. Yes, they could still do Related a temporary to the right. moratorium. Yes, because the moratorium has not been approved yet. Okay. Okay. All right. So we have first and a second on a deferral. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. No. Okay. Let the record show there was one opposed. Okay. So that's a deferral. The next item is authorize a new loading zone at 1102 Grundy Street requested by Penn's Mechanical. This is also in the zone, your moratorium zone area. Is that correct, Mr. Freeze? That is correct. Is there anyone here from Penn's Mechanical? Um, okay. Why don't you step forward, please, and discuss your request? My name is Faith Barnes. <clears throat> I'm the AGM there at Penn's Mechanical. Well, right now we have currently a lot of construction. Grundy is torn up for the next several re uh, weeks. But what we're looking for is we get deliveries anywhere from three to five days a week, especially with all of our arcade games and pinball machines and um, alcohol, stuff like that. We don't have anywhere designated for the delivery drivers. So <clears throat> as of right now with the construction, sometimes they're parking two, three blocks away and having to hand truck everything. So before 4 p.m., we're just looking for a loading area in the front, so we're able to get the delivery drivers there because we don't have a designated area. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Staff, comment, please. So our staff, our recommendation is to defer to the completion of the Connect Downtown Curb Study. It's the same recommendation as of, as of previous okay. uh, due to the compromising the uh, operations on Grundy Street by... Uh, allowing the loading zone. Okay. Chair? Yes, Ms. council member. Point of order. I, I, I guess my confusion is coming in that the staff recommendations are predicated on the downtown moratorium that this commission hadn't yet voted on. And so then that makes the staff recommendations Right, so I mean, we, we don't. Uh, let me let staff speak to yeah. how they make their recommendations as opposed to us trying to assume. So our recommendation would still be to defer even if we we didn't have a, a pause that was voted on by the Traffic and Parking Commission based on collection of data and study uh, with the Connect Downtown. Okay. All right. So is there a motion on this item? I would like to make a motion that is similar to the motion we just made, which would be to defer this um, amendment to uh, the next meeting and allow them to apply for a temporary permit. Okay. All right. So, may question. Ask, may I ask a question? Wait, wait, just, just wait okay. one minute. How does a 
temporary loading zone work, please? I know, because this is a loading zone request, not a valet zone request. So, so in both cases, when we're talking about a temporary, what we're really talking about is a lane closure permit. Is that not, I'm, I'm that deferring is correct. public works folks. That is that. correct. That's correct. All right, we have a motion to defer with a granting of a temporary permit. Is that correct, Commissioner? Okay. Is there a second to that motion? Okay. Second. There's a second. Okay. We'll have further discussion. Yes, council member. So I would support a motion to defer. And while I appreciate the intent, I, I do think the kind of the, the loading zone, valet zone, that there's, there is somewhat of a distinction there. And so um, I would support a deferral motion because I feel like um, uh, I, I, but I, I don't know if this would be the best use of a temporary um, scenario. I mean I would I would like to kind of make inquiries based on the staff analysis of the removal of the meters, the distance, some of the more practical information around which we make the decision. Whereas the staff recommendation again is, you know, defer to completing the connect downtown. I think I would want to understand from staff, you know, uh, yes or no. I mean, you know. Okay. All right. I would like to amend my motion. Okay. To just to a deferral okay. for the next meeting. So there's a motion to defer. Is there a second to that motion? Second. We have a first and a second. Okay. Is there any further discussion of that motion? If not, we'll ask for the yeas and nays. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Item's been deferred. Okay. The last item on the agenda is new NDOT staff support Chairman, announcement, please. Do you want to mention the other other two agenda items that were deferred at the request oh, of Council Oh, yes, I'm sorry. I, I scratched through those, so they went off. There were two items on our agenda. We, uh, one was authorize a left turn configuration on eastbound Ackland Avenue at 12th Avenue South, removing six on-street parking spaces on the south side of Ackland requested by the Catalyst Design Group and authorize a new parking restriction. No parking or standing any time on the west side of 18th Avenue, south from Edge Hill to Chet Atkins. Uh, Council Member Sledge has, these are in his district, has asked for a deferral. So we need a, is that correct? Or that did he correct. ask for a removal of these items? He, he requests for a deferral. Okay, so is there a motion? Move to, to defer. Okay, we have a motion to defer item H and I. Is there a second? Second. second. We have first and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 New NDOT staff support announcement. Yes, Chairman. I would like yes. to introduce uh, Jason Olam, uh, who is the assistant chief, oh, uh, took it on the role as assistant chief engineer over transportation systems management with the Nashville DOT. Uh, I'd like Jason to come up here and, and introduce himself. He will be taking over as staff liaison okay. on this on this uh, Traffic and Parking Commission. Welcome, <laughs> Chase, welcome aboard. Thank you, I'm excited uh, to be serving in this capacity. Um, Tell us a little, a yeah, give us a little bit of your background. A little background. Background, sorry. Where are you from? Or From, um, here and there. Uh, okay. I was uh, <laughs> at TDOT, state traffic engineer, then uh, my wife, uh, she had a deployment in D.C., so I moved up there with a family for two years during COVID, which was very fun. Um, and we're back now, so. Welcome. Yep, thank you. Welcome aboard. We'll look forward to working with Great. you. Great. Thank awesome. you. Thanks. Anything else? That's all. Okay. Make a motion to adjourn. We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. I know this took time. Appreciate it. <laughs>